Kathy Vick, Deeply Awake Chats 2017. The uh, time is short, but what's really fascinating is I see a lot of strands that are, um, they've been around a while, but uh, they haven't really come into position until today. So let me just see if I can pull this stuff together quickly, cogently, beautifully, and then go on with my day. Um, I'm blessed with being able to uh, It's very sacred. Uh, my role at this point is to care for an infant. And I am cared for as I care. Um, and I have been lately doing a lot of thinking about this humanity thing. Thinking that, you know, I always knew that looking at infancy is a wonderful way to learn more about humanity. You know, infants, uh, they sleep 20 out of 24 hours. Most of those 20 hours are spent in REM sleep. They're infants. They're dreaming of home. They're connected. The infants I take care of oftentimes will turn their eyes, their attention, their beingness to a blank wall and they're talking to somebody. It, the veil is so thin and the energy is so pure. So it's a perfect time and place to contemplate quietly, lovingly, thoroughly. And um, what I realize is that the very first thing that we make as humans, well, it's not a dollar. And um, if we, as an infant, um, relieve another person's suffering, well, that's nice. But that's certainly not our role. It seems to me, looking at an infant, loving an infant, having loved an infant, the very first thing that we make is we make connection, meaningfulness. We make someone significant when, as an infant, we smile at them. We touch them. We hold their finger in our little hand. We make love. That's the first thing we do as human beings. And I kind of have stayed there since I made that discovery. Um, this truth about being human is one that can be perverted, it can be subverted, it can be denied, it can be ignored until in a wash of days, in a sea of years, Someone reaches in, looks you in the eye, smiles, and makes love. And so, um, I think it's a really beautiful thing to just think about. It's even more beautiful to be part of. I told the mother of the child I care for, you know, I I hope it's okay, but 
when when she smiles at me, um, I'm the only person on this planet who matters. I, I'm the most important one just for that time. I'm the most loved. I'm the most seen. And uh, I know you're the mom, but it's like the sun comes out. So thank you for letting me be part of this. That's how I feel every single day at work. <laughs> so um, it's it's spectacular and um, very moving, obviously, and uh, incredibly healing, centering, stabilizing, and uh, a good place to spend time in memory of what's true, real, and uh, enduring through a lifetime. I'm a nurse of uh, primarily old folk and dying people. That's been my role. And uh, it's been my job to uh, get right up at that bedside and make love. My kind of love. Heart to heart, soul to soul, stranger to stranger kind of love. So, for me, uh, this process has been one, I think, to some degree, of bringing that more stylized and ritualized love that I uh, practiced religiously as a nurse into my daily life. That's really been the crux of much of my work the last year. This divide between the general population and patient population, where a patient can really be quite brutal, violent, hateful, all the things that, uh, you know, all the things that are supposed to just grind your gears and make you feel like crap. And I smile. I take it in. I work with it. I just, uh, I didn't, I always resented having to do that in my home life. I, it, I shouldn't have to heal off duty. So um, it's hard because I, I do that n not anymore. But that was my bread and butter for well over 30 years. Well over 30. So. Um, I realized this morning that uh, the Adamas tape that I watched and posted was very uh, fundamental, very helpful. He talked about how hard it is to be human and why. How inhumane humanity is. And he talked about uh, visiting the zoo, going to the zoo. For the day and oh it's going to be so much fun you're going to visit the animals and you're going to uh, eat zoo food and um take some zoo pictures and and it's going to be all things zoo for that day oh how fun and then you get to the zoo and you get involved in it and it becomes like you it's no longer somewhere you're visiting it's just your reality and the reality outside that you left doesn't really exist and it's just this zoo. Just this zoo. Then a curious thing seems to happen and how is it that you're in a, a cage and there are people walking past you? Some are knocking on the glass or hollering at you and taunting you. And he talked a lot about how humanity, humans, in their pursuits, including spiritual pursuits, spend a lot of time tidying their cage, hoping that the other inmates will be nice to them, and um, letting time pass, and feeling trapped. I thought, wow, Adamus, you've got that nailed. 
my my uh, imagery was I had circus tents, uh, being in this vast field of, of little tents, and then one by one they came down, and the people in the tents who thought they were freaks, and were treated as such, and and bartered, uh, you know, money was laid down to observe this freak and that freak. Um, suddenly the circus tents are coming down and uh, you just see these people sitting on stools elevated and they're looking around and they realize that no one is a freak who's in this same situation and then these former circus freaks begin to walk the midway and play games, you know, and uh, like knock the bottle over with the ball and and uh, begin to mingle, begin to feel normal. Because they're not isolated anymore. Who put up the circus tent? Who chose to go to the zoo and forget who they were? Well, that'd be me. That'd be you. So that's sort of the uh, a very nice metaphor, I think, because I am seeing that more and more, and I think that's why I really wanted to come. I really, 11:29, oh, 11:11. I'm really seeing this paradox. I'm really seeing the two realities coexisting. It, it's fascinating, and um, I'm seeing more and more the the consciousness and the the f feeling tone. I read a, a channeling that I did, I think, I don't know, three or four years ago, that talked about feeling t tone. That when you're in one space, the fear, guilt, resentment access or whatever, there's a tone. And when you're in bliss and when you're uh, peaceful and aligned, there is a tone. And they asked me to be aware of the tone. I think that's nice. But overall, the one of the messages this morning was, you know, hey, the video I did last is so cute because I'm I I'm thinking that I'm not assigning meaning to this. Hey, something big's coming. All the time, knowing that I am, and the most natural way that I put this sense that I have in context is that I was going to have a burst of light or I'd have something internal happen to me oriented. So I want to finish up by talking about the big change I see. And it's been gradual because it's big. <laughs> um, I have really had to, I've had to, uh, spend my life in reflection, contemplation, introspection, um, that's that's been a requirement. I walk out of these years of work a master, and I know this now, and it's easy for me now. When somebody comes up and says, "Yeah, but uh, take a look. You don't have you don't have a lot of zeros in your bank account. Take a look. You're not temporarily based. Take a look. You have a hip that hurts. Take a look. You're imperfect. You're imperfect. You're imperfect. You're a hypocrite. You're blah 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 blah." Because you know I have a chorus of those kind of people, and I have that internally. That's hard, and that's what I've been fighting against and with and um, not for <laughs> wanting to get rid of and I'm beginning to realize you know that's not going to happen this place is one of contrast of paradox of people in different vibrational frequencies this is a free will planet and so, um, this general population or the, the folks who fall asleep in the zoo or whatever, that's as much me as anyone. 
I'm not pointing fingers. I'm living proof of 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 misunderstanding and of pain and and confusion, not aimlessness. With a foundation that I came in with and wouldn't forget. So it is through communion with others that appreciation for other and for self blossoms. The work that I have done has been important. It has been foundational. It has been universal. It's been on time and appropriate. And it's also been the training. Two have been in an isolated place. And the isolation was severe. And being cut off was nearly complete internally. To watch these connections begin to come online again is astounding. But my ability to connect, my willingness to connect, it's different now. It's altered. Because for so long I felt such hypocrisy because I understood that the thing that I was trying to identify that was making me sick, that was paining me and twisting me inside, this consciousness that is tight and mean and has no vision and has nothing but fear that old consciousness. I feel like I've, I've really wanted to um, hate it, destroy it, get rid of it, disown it, all that. And um, I think that's because I, I really felt like I it was part of me. And I was doing my very best to break from it. I have said, you know, it seems to me like that's the soil in which I grow. Um, but, you know, it's all around us. And what Adama said really helped. It's the zoo. It's, it's the construct. It's not real. The way that we are treating each other as humans, like at the airport, at the grocery store, the whole money concept, all that is inhumane. It's not, it's psychotic. The culture is sick. To be a well adjusted, high functioning individual within that matrix requires buy in to the matrix. And, um, one can be masterful at being within the matrix and not part of it. But that's high level stuff that comes later because that's the place of paradox. What I'm talking about is um, feeling a general fear that the stuff that I didn't like I was full of. And it was only by identifying it speaking it and purging it that I get rid of it and I can understand that thinking um, but it's it's a push kind of thinking it's get away from me it's get out get this isn't okay while clinging at the same time so what I'm suggesting is happening is more of a for me um, acceptance that uh, I, I don't fit really with this culture. I did my very best and it it wasn't in my best interest 
but I did it. It hurt me, <laughs> but I did it. It's not my cup of tea. It, competition, everything, 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 everything for sale, um, good and bad, right and wrong, so that if, and ju judgment, what I'm talking about is judgments, criticisms, being the authority, and everybody else's shit. These are things that I, I really, you know, I didn't want to carry with me. How do you, how do you have authentic self-esteem and not be a total jerk? Which brings me to the conclusion of this and hopefully the end of my strands. Floating around, I walk around with a braid instead. Um, oh, I maybe have lost my, my way with that beautiful metaphor. Um, I just, I think that what is happening for me is this uh, breaking of the hermit thing. It's the life design thing for me. So I, I urge you, if you're interested, to look at a life design thing. Some of them you have to, I never pay for anything like that online, so I found a really good source of it, and you may too, but the idea is life design. And my life design is a unique one. It's that of Hermit. And um, it's basically uh, <laughs> just uh, going within for good reason for a long time. And emerging from this hermitage, an example, a role model. That's my job. So I'm... Um, the thing is, I, I just haven't had a, a, the ability within to accept that. It would be easy for me to say, I haven't had, outside, I haven't had people who have, you know, mirrored that. It's really not true. It's been me um, trying to figure out if I deserve it, if it really is mine. Um, if this, if this, I don't know, intelligence and sweetness and insight is mine. How am I supposed to know that if I don't have contrast? If I don't have, um, people in my life? But the thing is, going back to that infant, This is moving from me to us. Being a hermit is all about me. I think reviewing the work, uh, it was a fine pursuit. There's a humanity that will thank me one day. Right now all I get is shit, but one day. In the meantime, there's been this metaphor of walking out of caves, walking out of circus tents, walking out of zoos. And it's been curious to me, how do I do that? I want a new life, right? And now comes the time of realizing it's just a paradox. My life feels different now. I'm back. I'm remembering the things that really matter. Connection. Showing up for another person. Really, truly caring about another person regardless of what comes out of their mouth or out of their hands but knowing <clears throat> how to manage when I'm asked to take, take a dance through a karmic lesson. 
I am not here to do karma with anybody anymore. I am here to create, to connect, and to, with gratitude, with innocence, with power. with wisdom. With gentleness. With benevolence. To make love. To make light. Because they are indeed the same thing. And love and light at their root is data, it's information, it's source. I'm not typical, I'm not conventional, I'm not part of the general population, although that's my address, more firmly so than many of my friends. That's changing. That, my dear, is changing. Because the tyranny of doing it right, the terror of doing it wrong, and uh, the ease with which love is uh, suspected of wrongdoing. Those things are um, over. I hope I've weaved my ephemeral strands well enough to have created a garment that uh, gave you pleasure and peace as you tried on. It did me. Namaste.